Yes, John Hudson comes in with the latest UFO news that seems to be racking everything up these days. And he's always keeping us abreast of what's going on. John, welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you, sir. You know, if I ever get back into public speaking, I'm going to have a trouble like not having a theme song before I get on stage. Which would be you need a theme a song. You it'd be a ridiculous. It'd be a ridiculous thing to ask for as a public speaker. But man, it'd be, it's going to be a little weird not having that. Um, you, you know what? But, though I will say this quickly. Yeah, I have done a few conferences where they bring me out to Bumblefoot. Oh yeah, and little brother is watching. It is weird, man. <laughs> it, it is weird than just going up and taking the stage and saying. Hi, my name's Dave. And, totally. You know, like yeah, all this, you hear your music and you're like, oh my God, like, here we go. Like, there's no turning back now. I can't ditch it. But yeah, this, now, is, this is serious now, right? Oh, it's on. It is on. By the way, uh, I want to say, uh, and I know I mentioned it during the break here, but for our, our listeners elsewhere, I want to say a big congratulations to you, Gemma Jade and uh, Big Willie Townsend for uh, kicking off the first weekend of After Hours. The reviews have been, from our audience, amazing. And uh, that is well-deserved on on your guys' part. And uh, I think it's going to be something. I mean, we got so – it's so strong of a weekend now with uh, Lynn Wallington kicking butt with her interviews, uh, you know, albeit a couple of hours earlier. And then the audience gets to switch over to you guys fantastic job john fantastic well, thank you. No, it, it, it's, it's, it was a great start and and you know we got three dedicated people we're going to put a lot of time and effort into it and with a little feedback from the audience we're going to get real good at this so uh, hopefully you know we'll put on a good show for everyone wonderful all right let's kick things off former guest on this show and a good friend of spaced out radio jonathan davies you might want to follow him on twitter at i want to know uk as he is from the united kingdom you know, recently met on a podcast with a couple of interesting people. Why don't you fill us in? Well, no, th- th- he was on a bloody panel. And, uh, and I, you know, Jonathan, I don't know if you're watching now, but or if you're going to listen to this later, but, you know, you and I need to talk because I want to find out how you got your butt on that panel because, you know, being on a panel with Jack Sarfati and, and, uh, and um, uh, Russell Targ and some other people would be one hell of a way to spend an afternoon that i would certainly enjoy uh but yes but this is basically a, it, it's it's not for the lighthearted. it's two hours and seven minutes um it is uh, on youtube it is a, a panel discussion among several different people um and they go into a whole host of different topics around um, remote viewing ufos um some of the history stuff on on you know um, you know, who different, who like who Axelrod was in the books, um, you know, um, Jonathan does not partake, partake in all of it. Um, I'm not sure anyone really partakes in all of it, but um, it's a it's a great it's a great and it's a very in-depth thing. It's, it's, it's well worth watching. Uh, I'll provide a link to it. Um, and I will say this, too. Um, uh, uh, it, 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 it's probably one of the nicest presentations of of Jack Sarfati that I've seen. It just puts him in a much this 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 was a good this was a good look for him it was a good w- look for a lot of people yeah 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 the p- panel turned out really well so who do you think axelrod is i don't know you know i i'm my 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 inclination is that is that characters in books are rarely one person that characters in books are usually you know composite people because of of the of the dangers of 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 mapping one person and 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 quite honestly just the cost of developing characters um and so you know my guess is is that axelrod is some combination of um you know you know i mean, I, I can't think of right now what like say that like the top three best guesses are but my but you know it, it's just like with gumball right like, you know you walk up to those gumball machines where they you know those games where they you know they you have to guess how many you know marbles are in the thing and you wait until the very last day, average out what everyone else guessed, and you know you will get the right answer, right? So it's like you know you you can you can basically kind of um, you know um, you know to me, yeah, to to me there's just there's there's lots of opportunity there. But it, it's it it was a it was a very very good panel, and it's um you know it's just it's a lot of fun to see, especially because you don't get to see Russell Targ very often, um and and Jack was in his element, so it it was uh, it was definitely definitely well worth watching. I, I I highly advise everyone to check it out. But it is long; it's two and a half, two hours and seven minutes. So you know, get some get some caffeinated drink and you know sit down maybe on a Saturday afternoon. Well, Jack Sarfati, I don't think a lot of people 
uh, outside of the UFO world really know who this gentleman is. He is a someone who was considered a very big player behind the scenes for a long time on the UFO side. And now there's a lot of people who believe that Sarfati has literally gone off the deep end a little bit. I mean, what, what's going on here with him? Boy, would I like to know, you know, and I'll be honest, I've, I've put some effort into this one um, because, um, you know, there, there are certain aspects of, of, of Jack that I really like. And, um, you know, I'm, um, you know, uh, full disclosure, you know, I'm, I'm on one of his mailing lists and, and or at least I was actually, I'm not sure I'm on it anymore. I, may, I might have gotten kicked off, but I was on one of his mailing lists for a while. But I got to see if why well, I'm not on there anymore. And, uh, and, you know, and, and he, he, he is a very clever man. He, he puts forward some very interesting ideas. He has been involved since the beginning of time. It was a very creepy thing to be reading Cosmic Trigger One, which is like an old book that came out, like, I don't remember what year that book came out, but that book came out a long time ago. And Jack's one of the characters in that book, right? Like, I mean, it's like, you know, it, it, around the UFO topic. Like, I mean, he's been around forever, right? Um, but the problem is, is that he does tend to kind of go off the rails a lot and he tends to be very, um, very rough. Um, he has, he has, he, he has a very, he has a very, he has a very unpolished API and, um, and therefore, um, you know, he tends to, he tends to really upset people. And, um, and so it makes it hard, but, you know, he, he does have, he does have quite a career behind him and, um, you know, he, his, you know, Basically, what it comes down to is that when he when he speaks, he should be listened to. But you have to take what he said and and weigh it just like you do everyone else's, um, because you know he he can get get just as excited about something as anyone else can. All right, and finally on this topic, let's talk about the Collins Elite because this is a a program that not a lot of people, even in the UFO field, know or understand. Yeah, and so and so I and I will uh, I'm going to differ uh, probably a little bit with many folks on 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 my analysis of this uh, just because I just uh, I, I see it a little bit differently. But but the the rough explanation of it is is that the Colin elites is a is a group of um of very very hardcore Christian folks. So not your run of the mill. You know these are you know these are pretty on, on the extreme, and they're kind of littered throughout the government. And that they um, essentially, you know, are are part of some cabal that basically pull strings and 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 influence things. I I would argue that it's probably true, but painted a little bit different of a picture. In that, you know, I think it's more likely that it it's a group of like-minded, you know, hardcore Christian folks within that organization, but it's not as formal as people think it is. Um, I, I've been in big organizations where I've had friends and, you know, we've been we've had, we've each been in influential places and we've talked about things at lunch that we wanted to do and realized that we could help each other to do it. You know, it's not necessarily a conspiracy. Sometimes it's just good, good working behavior, you know. And so to me, um, you know, I I don't know. I mean, well, I'm not happy with some of the results that I've 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 heard from rumor from the Collins elite. Some of the some of the influence that they've been able to exert that certainly makes me as nervous as it does anyone else. But I think fundamentally, the idea that there are a bunch of like-minded Christian folks from throughout the government that believe a certain thing and therefore act, you know, as a group, um, I, I, to me, that's just human behavior. I don't think that's really that big of a deal. Really? Okay. So. The so, Collins... It's like a bunch of people to do sports betting, right? I mean, right. in every company, there's a huge group of people who do sports betting. They have very strong opinions about that that world, right? And there's whole relationships that happen in that world that no one else hears about. Thank you for answering my question before I even had it out. All right, let's move on to topic number two tonight with you. UAPX, which is a lot of the people who took place or took part in the 2004 Nimitz incident, combined with some scientists and, you know, former Sunday host here, Michael W. Hall, they are getting ready to release some data that they did on a recent study. Fill us in. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is, um, you know, we, we heard it, we, we heard it, uh, you know, a tease about this, um, when, when Gary was on, um, with us, uh, Saturday night and, um, you know, this is basically, you know, the data that, that they've been collecting for some time that they've had to hold on to because of the NDAs that they had in place with the different um, 
uh, you know, media projects that they were involved in. And essentially those media projects will, you know, go published in, in 2022. And therefore at that point, they become free from their NDAs and their plan is to release all of their data. Now they've mentioned before that they plan to release their data. They've mentioned before that they plan to release any videos they've captured and so forth. What we, what we didn't get before was some of the specifics on exactly what they're talking about. And it turns out what we're actually talking about is um, something around the orders of, um, you know, of, of essentially three terabytes of data um, including, uh, and, and everyone, you know, prepared to, prepared to, to drool, um, 600 hours of infrared video. 600 hours. 600 hours. So let's assume, let's just assume that, um, that, you know, only a percentage of those are worth anything, right? So let's say, so let's, let's say you got 60 hours. Forget that. Let's be really aggressive. Let's say you got six hours of good footage, right? Mick West, I don't know where you are, buddy, but have fun. Six hours. Let's see how you do, right? I mean, that's a lot of content. I don't care who you are. That's a lot of stuff to go through, right? This is going to take everyone a while to chew through. So, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see when it comes out. But to me, this is a really exciting thing. And I what I'm hoping is that these guys set the precedent. And these guys really set the stage and these guys set the, the level of expectations that we can now have against everyone else that says, look, you know, if you want to do a public project, if you if you know, if you're not going to be the government, then don't be the bloody government and release your damn data. Right. Like get get it out, get it out as fast as you can, as clean as you can share it with whoever you can make it as open and, and free and understandable as you can. And and let's figure this out. And I, I, I absolutely applaud UAPX for doing this. I'm I I don't have a date yet. I'm a beyond excited i'm i'm like little, little, this for me is gonna be like christmas this is gonna be getting that data is gonna be awesome now all of this literally has come from the same area where the nimitz incident happened i believe around the well yeah well so 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 maybe so that is our understanding our understanding is that the bulk of the work was done in around the catalina island area however we do know that UAPX has also, you know, looked into other sites and other locations. Like, for example, uh, we do know that they, um, you know, did some poking around at Skinwalker Ranch. And so it might be that there's more there's more data than we think. So it, it'll be some interesting to see how this turns out. That's going to be very interesting to see how everything kind of pans out with that. I mean, Gary, Gary Voorhees is a good friend of this show and... You know, they've got a very strong team there in regards to it. I know they're hoping, uh, you know, Kevin Day was involved with it earlier on. He was the, you know, main player in the 2004 Nimitz incident as well. So we're going to see where it goes, man. There's some we're great folks on that team. And, 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 you know, and I also, I want to applaud that, that organization for, 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 you know, giving people chances and taking chances with people but also um, but also for cutting their ties and moving on when they when they find that, that things don't match. And, and I think that what they're ending up with is a much tighter, a much tighter team because of it. And um, I, I applaud them for it. And if they if they really produce, you know, I mean, to be fair, right. I mean, that three terabyte number is all exciting and everything of that three terabytes. I don't know what percentage that is actually going to be really interesting to, to, you know, like what would be worth talking about, like on a, on a platform like this, right. I mean, it might only be that 10% of it is, is really interesting. I don't know. I have no idea yet. I won't know until we look at it, but it's a lot of data to start with. And that gives me a lot of hope that there might actually be a, you know, a fair amount of good raw data to look at. And because there's been some hints at some things, um, you know, uh, Michael Hall has hinted at some things involving um, uh, whale song and so forth that are, are pretty provocative. And seeing any data on that stuff would be fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. John, thank you so much. We'll get you to stick around for the after hours. Let's get to Shirky Poo's news.